Hello and welcome to the next uh, 2012 Corsair Intro Pack unboxing. As I said in the previous video for the Mystical Might one, um, I'm now going to open up the Blood and Fire and again I'm going to put the um, booster pack to one side because I want to build this 30 card uh, deck, do a seal with, with, along with um, other boosters that I bought. So we're going to open this up, see what's in here. Okay, so again, put the booster to one side for later. And let's just open this up. And the same as before, the two inserts, one how to play and one with on instructions on how the decks play and how you can improve them. So in this deck, our foil is Flame Blast Dragon. This is a, a red-black deck in case you hadn't seen that. Warstorm Surge, Tectonic Rift, two of those. Hideous Visage, Incinerate is in the deck. Swiftfoot Boots, Taste of Blood. Shock, two shocks. Three shocks. Swamp. And here we go through all the swamps. Mountains. And back to non-land cards. Volcanic Dragon. Crumbling Colossus. Two Crumbling Colossus. Vampire Outcast. Two of those. Gorehound Minotaur. Two of those. Blood Rage Vampire. Goblin Bang Chuckers. Another Blood Rage Vampire. Manic Vandal, Blood Ogre, three Blood Ogres, Onyx Mage, Dusk Hunter Bat, three of those, Stormblood Berserker, Goblin Tunneler, Tormented Soul, Goblin Fire Slinger, of those and Goblin Arsonist. Now what you'll notice with this particular deck going through here there's Bloodthirst is the ability that crops up a lot. So if we have a look at the instructions for playing this deck this is a Blood and Fire deck and this is again from, from their blurb. Some decks like to infect pain, other decks love to infect pain, inflict pain. The Blood and Fire deck easily falls into the second category. Once you start dealing damage to your opponent, the frenzy begins. So what there are is there's more than it says there's more than a dozen creatures with the bloodthirst ability. As each of them enters the battlefields, it checks to see if your opponent has dealt any damage that turn. If so, the creature arrived with some plus one, plus one counters on it. So you get the maximum potential out of them. You'll need ways to deal, deal damage to your opponent first. So as it says, if, you've, if your opponent has been dealt any damage that turn. If you can't deal damage to your opponent, it's okay to cast bloodthirst creatures anyway. Um, they just be powered down from what they potentially can be. And 
again in the in the instructions it's saying you want to try and be creative about how you enable blood thirst um, spells like shock and incinerate can clear out potential blockers or they can deal damage direct to your opponent so that's another way of activating the bloodthirst ability and then it talks about finishing off the, the game um, and also the fact that uh, the seven power crumbling colossus has trample so you're going to get some damage through if it attacks and that your opponent uh, has blocked any you know damage would be rolled over um, providing they've not obviously blocked it all and it's saying you can finish off the game in a number of ways spells like hideous visage and tectonic Tectonic Rift can leave your opponent able to block. Warstorm Surge fires off a salve each time you get a new creature. And if all fail, if all else fails, just attack with dragons. Ways to modify it. Um, you could add more cards that enable Bloodthirst like Grim, Grim Lava Mancer or Chandra the Firebrand. You could also add game-ending creatures with Bloodthirst. Uh, Furyborn Hellkite, which has Bloodthirst 6. Or Blood Lord of Vasgoth, which has Blood Bloodthirst 3 and gives Bloodthirst to all your vampires. So there's quite a few options there. And that is the Bloodthirst deck, Blood and Fire, the Black Red 2012 Corset Intro Pack deck. Thanks for watching.